we shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. What's up? It's Captain Mike M. Welcome to episode 157 of the Gamers in Beta podcast. Happy to be with the fellas tonight. Recording, we got a good show for you. Had a good day today with my son, celebrating his third birthday. If you saw our pictures online on Twitter, you saw that we were the Batman family for the day. Uh, Corey cannot be with us tonight. He's moving, so we wish uh, Corey well. It's pretty uh, steamy here in the Boston area, so I'm sure it sucks to lug all those boxes around. But uh, we got Jay Maniac Seventeen here. What's going on, Jay? Oh, not much. Uh, feeling ignored uh, again around here. Uh, you know, the wife doesn't listen to you. The kids don't listen to you. Siri definitely doesn't listen to you. And uh, now that the Xbox has uh, Cortana, she don't listen for shit. <laughs> so uh, that has been uh, my uh, interesting things I have done, and also. Uh, you know, I kind of did my usual redneck weekends. I went out on the four-wheeler today, and uh, yesterday I was in uh, Mike's neck of the woods. We went to Gillette Stadium and saw the Monster Jam Monster Trucks. So. Yeah, I, I was watching those uh, videos and pictures online, some cool stuff. Not for me, but um, it still looked like a cool thing, and you had some good uh, position on the 50-yard line. Oh, yeah. We were uh, they, uh, we were basically third row back um, because they closed down like the first 10 rows, just in case a truck gets into the stands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were pretty much third row, and I was right next to the TV announcer that they have for it. She was right next to us, and they have uh, judges that they bring from the audience. They were sitting literally right next to us also. So we had prime seating. Awesome. Well, let's welcome in the third man in the booth, Joe State. How are we doing, Joe? Wait, shouldn't Jay go? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Joe? Oh, nothing much. I'm uh, I'm I'm riding riding the excitement. I found out that I got accepted uh, into the old packs. That's right. So, this year, uh, first packs, or have you been to other ones before? No, it's my first packs, and I get to go as. Press, yes, you got so, to, uh, I get to double down on being overwhelmed. I guess you got the <laughs> yes. You get the speed pass. You can go right to the uh, front of the line. Yeah. So just uh, right off the top here, um, this is somewhat of a uh, new adventure for us this week. We have abandoned Skype. So for those who might not know, um, I'm also on the Gamers Unscripted podcast. And last Wednesday, we tried to record episode 48, and I couldn't get my recording software to record. And Jeremy from Dad's Getting Grounded could not get his to record either. So... I, uh, after much reflection, I threw my hands up in the air and said, that's it. I'm fucking done with podcasting. You guys go on and have a nice life with yourself. And <laughs> then when I came back to reality, I said, well, let's look at other avenues. And when we were having issues on, um, the gamers unscripted, Meef J suggested using discord and he uses OBS on everyday gamers. And I'm not the biggest OBS fan out there, so I use XSplit. So we're trying tonight to record this podcast with Discord and XSplit. So we'll see how it goes. We did some tests during the week, and um, it worked out pretty good. So hopefully the end result will be the same. Uh, right off the top, also I wanted to mention some people have been noticing, um, I think through some of my tweets and on Facebook, occasionally I'm wearing these gamers in beta shirts and, um, Sean Quicksilver3355 just hit me up a little while ago asking about shirts and some other people like Devious Mr. Matt, um, also have inquired. So be on the lookout for that. We might be doing, um, some sort of, uh, you know, shirts. I'm not sure the logistics yet, but, um, stay tuned for that. And Joe's going to need some. 
Yes. Yeah, I'll just have to DIY screen print some because you know with your face off. on it. I can send yeah, you my face on it. I can send you the like the PNG file, and then you can go nuts with it, make it your own. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So we got a, a planner here, but I want to go off script real quick. I think every six to eight months, sometimes longer or whatever, it takes me sometimes longer to, to come up with songs. I like to write songs for my band. And uh, usually the guitar players write the songs, but sometimes I will come up with a few here and there when I feel inspired. <clears throat> and right now I feel like I'm at that point. So I'm listening to a lot of different things, some metal, some hardcore punk. Um, but I also have a guilty pleasure. And I know I've been beating you up on the Twitters uh, lately, Jay, with your um, taste in, uh, what's the name of that band again? I don't even want to utter the word. Disturbed, Disturbed, right? Disturbed yeah. yes. <clears throat> so I have a guilty pleasure that I want to come out with because I think it's fair play. If, if I beat you up on Disturbed, you might want to beat me up on this band here. <clears throat> But I think the uh, the drummer for this band is really, really good. And I'm not saying from like a technical st standpoint, which he is, but he's just got a really good groove and foot and everything like that. So <clears throat> a guilty pleasure for me is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I listen to Chad Smith. I don't necessarily care for what the other guys do. Some of the songs are okay. I can take or leave. But often when I'm writing songs, I will pull up some of their older, older stuff because the newer stuff, frankly, I'm not sure if he even plays on. It's so slow and stuff. But anyways... <clears throat> I listen to a lot of his drumming for sometimes for inspiration. So that got me on the topic of guilty pleasures. And since I just talked about uh, the Chili Peppers being a guilty pleasure of mine, I am curious if either of you have a guilty pleasure, whether it's, you know, music or gaming or movie, you know, <clears throat> do you have a, uh, a particular uh, <laughs> genre or band? You know, what, what's a guilty pleasure of, of either one of yours? Joe or Jay? Oh, man. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> So I re I still even though I I try not to be as as low brow as I was when I was fifteen I still really love the Toxic Avenger. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. So trauma movies. Yep. Yeah. My the old B pleasures. movies are great. But are you Jay? You have any sort of guilty pleasure? Uh, new Kids on the Block. You really get down with that? No, no, can't stand New Kids on the Block. Any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Just say disturbed. <laughs> uh, Poker face. What the hell's her name? Um, Poker face. Oh, uh, she wore the uh, meat dress there. I, I I can't think of her name either, but I know who you're talking about. Right? Yeah, I I, I purchased one of her albums. Lady one Gaga. Time. Lady Gaga. Holy crap. Yeah, I uh, purchased one of those <laughs> albums uh, for some reason on Amazon, I don't know, like two or three years ago. Um, they had it, it was like 99 cents, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll click it on the other wife will listen to it. I, I've started to, because uh, the iTunes is such a nightmare to deal with now, and it won't download my music now, you can only deal, it pretty much are only allowing you to use, uh, you know, the the iTunes match crap, and it's beginning to annoy me, so I started using the Amazon um, music app, um, and it's excellent. I'm enjoying it. They don't have maybe as good of a selection as some of the other ones, but um, it works for me, so a lot of times I do listen to the Disturbed one, but uh, I put it on my music for the ones that I purchased, and I started listening to it, and the Lady Gaga one came on. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I gotta fast forward. I'm like, ah, I'm in the middle of work, and I'm not gonna fast forward. I started listening. I listened to the whole album, and it wasn't terrible, so... I would call that a guilty pleasure, I guess. No, it's just, it, it's good, you know, Lady Gaga, yeah, I can, I can nah, I'm not even going to say take a lever. I can just totally leave her. But whatever. Right. We all, <laughs> we all have our guilty pleasures. Disturbed is, are they the ones that have, I, I bust on you for this, because I think I know who they are and I'm envisioning, are they the ones that have that song Down with the Sickness? Yes. Oh, fuck that band right up the ass. It's good. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, boy. Anyway, well, I, I listen, guess. Uh, I listen to a lot of that stuff. I was a hair metal kid. I grew up in the 90s, you know, the, the late well, 80s. Well, that's exactly, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's exactly you know, I mean, who the so new I metal. Listened, I listened to all the hair metal and all that stuff. So, yeah, I liked all the hair metal, all that poison, uh, you know, I mean, that love-hate. I actually like the love-hate album, even though they put out one album and they are fucking terrible people. But the music, it just, <laughs> when I hear it, it reminds me when we used to go out and party and have fun together, you know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, some of it is memories for me, so. Yeah. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought up the glam stuff because that's exactly who these new metal bands are. They are glam bands just in a different package. It's exactly what they are. Make no bones about it. If some other style of music was popular right now, that's exactly who Disturbed would be at this present time. But because the new metal thing is, is popular, that's who they are. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. They're a calculated manufacturer. Yes, exactly. 
if some other trend anyway. was going on right now, they would be they would be that trend. Um, what, are you saying Nickelback's bad too? The fuck? <laughs> Let's move on. Well, no, actually, this is going to. <laughs> This is actually going to tie perfectly into that, Jay, because I want to talk about heroes real quick. And I know the Nickelback are your heroes. So this is going to tie in uh, no. very good. So our friend Dan Amrick made a uh, sort of benign uh, tweet just a few minutes ago. He said something to the effect of your heroes aren't perfect either. Don't sweat it. And that got me thinking about heroes as I was driving and getting my wife uh, Indian food just a few minutes ago. I got to do weird things to keep myself intrigued while I drive. And, so you uh, stopped and got a sandwich? I did get a sandwich and two hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, vegan? <laughs> no, Joe's the vegan on the show. Uh, heroes. You know, but I don't know. I was that was, that like sort of start, uh, stopped me in my track there real quick. Because with the exception of my grandfather, I don't really have heroes. I certainly have you know musical inspirations, but um, I'm just thinking about that heroes. Do you guys have any heroes? Like someone you like, you know, whether it's you know besides a family member, whether it's an author or a musician or a video game developer. Do you guys have any heroes? Well, I'm like you, and you said no family, but. I'm going to break the rules as usual. My, uh, my grandfather is pretty much my right. the main hero for me. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's as far as somebody famous. I mean, nowadays it's really tough because. Well, I'm not even I mean, saying now because as you get older, your outlook changes. But did you have like heroes like when you were growing up? I mean, I had people that I looked up to and was like, "Wow, that's a really good singer. That's a really good band." But as far as like heroes, I'm, I don't. I don't know. I've never yeah. really, I've never really been that person. But uh, I don't I, think yeah. I have any heroes per se. I mean, there's definitely people that have done some things that I admire or right. aspire to. But yeah. I don't like idolize anybody. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like Mike Mignola, he, the creator of Hellboy, right? He, um, he wanted to do something special with his daughter when she was like 10 years old. And so he and her got together and kind of just like co-wrote this short story. Like she basically, he helped her along with writing it. She was the main writer. And then he did all the art for it. And then, you know, since he's established, he got it kind of like published. And uh, he ended up winning an Eisner Award for both her and him. So his daughter at 10 was an Eisner Award winning comics uh, writer. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, pretty inspiring. I, and that's something that I, I kind of look up to. But yeah, I yeah. wouldn't say that he's my hero. <clears throat> I haven't really dug into too many people I mean, besides musicians. Uh, so there's probably people out there that would be my heroes if I looked a little deeper than just the uh, usual first page of Google. You know, yeah, certainly, you know, back in the day, like Bill Ward from Black Sabbath, um, you know, undeniable um, inspiration. And then as I got earlier, uh, I should say later on in, in uh, music and grew up in hardcore, I mean, to me, the the, the three uh, top drummers, if you were early to, I'd say late 80s, early 90s, you know, it was Armand from Sick of It All, Will from AF and um danny from biohazard certainly people say you know mackie from the chromags is the, the best hardcore drummer but frankly his output sucks besides age of coral um you know it's a great record he's on but the stuff he's done with shelter you know even hazen street and stuff like that it's just it's just not even good and he was in some pop band i can't remember what they were some like latino pop band um <clears throat> so he's a tremendous talent but his output as a whole is not that great yeah, for, for me, I, I, now that I've had a little time to kind of reflect and look back, I mean, the, probably the furthest one back that I can think of was like Jim Rice. Mm. Um, my grandfather absolutely loved him. I mean, if, man, he was the home run man, you know, yep. way back. And, uh, you know, and he was also, uh, he did a lot of things, you know, to put things out there for kids and, and do stuff like that. Yes. Uh, Teddy Bruski was another one for yep. me. Yeah. I mean, he, um, you know, he came off as a very class act and very uh, team oriented person. He was always there for the team, even after he had, you know, had his stroke and then came back and yeah. then reti and even after retirement, I mean, till this day, I mean, uh, I think he, he is, a, exemplifies being a hero. I mean, yeah. he was always there for other people, you know, um, mm -hmm. even when he was in his, you know, having a hard time and everybody was trying to to hold him up, he was still trying to hold everybody else up too. Yeah. I mean, I think that exemplifies a hero there. So there's a very, um, 
famous scene with Jim Rice. It was some, I want to say late seventies, early eighties. I think he was at bat. I'm pretty sure he was at bat <clears throat> and either the foul ball or his bat went into the stands and injured a child pretty good. And he climbed into the stands and the child, the person was covered in blood. And he picked him up with his arms and carried them over to like, either brought him in the dugout, brought him wherever the first aid person was. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and and it was stuff like that. It was the stuff like that that did it, and that you know. So yeah, that, that was probably one of the earliest ones that I can think of. Yeah, I mean, other than music influences, which even now I would not think that they're heroes nowadays, but I thought they were way back because you know I was just you know Dave Mustaine. Yep. Man, that man is strange now. <laughs> yeah, he went through some sort of um, yeah. You know, like Christian rebirth, and I think he sort of phased himself out of that. I think he's gone through that, and now he's on the other side of it, and he's done with it. Uh, I Just think he's still in it, but he's down. not as yeah, right. He's toned it down now. Um, I mean, nowadays more so. Uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned it before. I really like Shine Down, and I think that uh, they're somebody uh, one that of can Joe's because, favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it may or may not be, but I mean that that's a band. I mean, they've even they've put it out there. You know, the singer said, you know, he had a lot of problems. You know, he had drug and alcohol issues and and whatnot. And, and you know, and, and also you know, kind of attitude and stuff. And he says, that, you know, that's something that he kind of he explained that it's something that he grew through. You know, he grew out of, um, because being so famous like that, you know, I mean, it's very easy to fall into, uh, some bad habits on those sides. And then he had his, his kid and he says, you know, he's cleaned up, he does everything. And he is also out there trying to do good for people. And that, you know, when you, when you go to concert, it, it shows, uh, they put on an excellent show and he really, you know, he's, you know, trying to, obviously they all try to pump up the, the crowd, but I think they do it in a positive manner. So that's, that, it's probably more of a modern for music for me. So, Cool. Anything else to add, Joe? Anything else come to no, mind? I don't think no. so. All right. <clears throat> well, let's get into the gaming uh, discussion. That's what people tune in for. But those were a few things that uh, popped in my brain during the day that I wanted to discuss. Uh, oh, this- thanks, Mike, because I really enjoyed that. <laughs> you <are? laughs> It was out of nowhere, and I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Steam sale. Has anybody made any purchases yet? Uh-huh. I have, I have not. I have. No. Jay? Joe, you haven't? Nope. Nah. I'd... The only thing I've seen in the last three days that I've considered getting is the uh, remaster, or, yeah, the remaster of uh, Resident Evil, which mm-hmm. is on there right now for like 12 bucks. Huh. Interesting. Resident Evil, just the original? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay, have you made any purchases? Um, I have. Uh, first, I will put out there. Because in the past, I have purchased so many games. I was like, oh, that's only like two bucks. Oh, that's what... And never played the damn things. So I have really toned myself down. But this time, I've been waiting to get The Witcher 3 for PC. And I know it was on sale for GOG and stuff. But I like the idea of Steam where if I change computers and re-download Steam, I can re-download it. I don't have to go back to a digital you know, backup or something like that. I just go in and Steam knows that I own it and I download it. So um, I did pick up um, the base game for Witcher 3 uh, for, was it, uh, I think $24. Yeah. Um, and I'll pick up the DLC when it goes on sale because they still, it's still, you know, the price for the for the DLC and the season pass is still up there because it just recently released. So um, I did pick that up and man, does it look good. <laughs> on the PC. Anything else you picked up? No, that's it. Just just that. <laughs> so I, I think I spent thirty dollars so far. I got um, Wolfenstein: The New Order for ten dollars. Oh, I I was close. Nice. I got uh, Rise: Son of Rome for four seventy five, maybe. Um, Lego Batman Three: Beyond Gotham. I got this RPG game called Cross of the Dutchman. <laughs> and <laughs> what you find that funny? Do I amuse yeah, you? What the hell is that about? <laughs> Do I amuse you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll I'll play it and uh, let you know. How's that? All right, sounds good. And I picked up um, Marvel Marvel Heroes 2016. The game is actually free to play, but. Uh, Jeremy from Dad's Getting Ground has been hounding me to uh, pick this up and um, I guess if you bought this pack that comes with um, Iron Man and Captain America 
it's like two dollars and forty nine cents, and I guess it gives you some other crap. Uh, but we'll get into that during the what I've been playing section. But I picked up that, and then he gifted me uh, Beat Hazard. So thanks to Jeremy for that. So nice. That's yeah, he I, tweeted about that. I I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Um, I'm keeping my eyes on, of course, the Division and Fallout 4. I want to see those drop below uh, 50% off. We got till July 4th, so if those get any lower, then I will uh, bite on them at that time. Ruth Talos Principle's 10 yeah. bucks right now. I'm definitely not ruling it out, but you know, I gotta. I definitely gotta see something that actually really grabs me. I I buy I buy so many games because I'm not one to just like avoid getting something that I want. To where it's hard, you know, like I, I got everything that I want and everything that I've been seeing, I don't really care about that much. Otherwise, I would already have it. You know, if you listen to uh, Open Form Radio this week, uh, Vlad's Hammer was talking about um, CDKeys.com. And if you go on there right now, you know, if, if some of these games you think you'd play on PC eventually, there's some good um, deals out there. The uh, the new Lego Star Wars game, uh, the deluxe edition is only 26 bucks. Um, wow. Maf Mafia 3, $35. You know, uh, your favorite Watch Dogs is on there, pretty cheap. Yeah, jeez. Titanfall. Yeah, Call of anybody... Anybody interested in Bioshock at all? Well, it's like ninety nine cents or something like that, right? Uh, three ninety nine. Yeah, I already have them. Yeah. Seven forty nine for. I, but I think I'm going to wait because if they may be coming out with that uh, redo, they're going to do there. So yeah, that actually is the first and second that. one. Yeah. Uh, um, moving on a little bit here, it looks again by all accounts that these um, Xbox One. Uh, slim models, the S, the different sizes, the actual 299 uh, model, the 500 gigabyte, and the one terabyte are going to be December. Uh, reading a couple articles out there, seeing people tweet, and then just talking to people in general, uh, it seems like by all accounts, Microsoft's going to try to get people who need, um, I'm using uh, Jeremy's quotes here, need that bleeding edge technology. Uh, they're going to try to get those people to maybe buy the two terabyte first. <clears throat> Haven't uh, you know confirmed that one hundred percent, but just the extensive digging I've done throughout the week, it looks by all accounts the two terabytes coming out before the other models. Yeah, and I think that was intentional for that reason. Um, I I just think that I mean people use the example you know look at Nvidia they put out the ten eighty and now. You know, they're not going to release the 1070 for a while, or they they released it afterwards. But right. I mean, they never said, "Hey, we're releasing our new video cards. Here's the 1080, and uh, you know, or our new 10 series is coming out, and we're going to release it, and it's going to be 499." You know, Microsoft comes out and goes, "Here we are, 299, the new Xbox One S," and then you go in and look, and it's the 500 gigabytes that's 299. It's 399 for the two terabyte and that's the only one that you're going to get and that's the one that's going to release first that's kind of bait and switch to me um where sure. nvidia put it right out there the 1080 is going to be 600 of course with aftermarket resales right now that is not the case <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so but um you know i mean i just I, I really think that they still have their wires crossed as far as um getting the, the word out there when they're doing these things and just creating their own headaches. Yeah, I mean, I hope it comes to fruition that, that it's not the case, that they all come out at the same time. That would be nice. But by all accounts, they appear to be coming in December and not in um, August. When it feels like it's a really, uh, like, shysty strategic move. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, here's the, our new ones out at this price. And then come holiday season, all these uneducated people are going to go in there and be like, whoa, look, there's the new one right there for way cheaper. Right. Yeah. 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 And um, I mean, if this was the PS4, I would be going for the two terabyte because you can't, you know, you have to actually physically change out the hard drive, you know, uh, you know, but with the Xbox, you can just plug an external in. No. So I no, guess I'll take the five hundred. So so I guess the question is, Jay, if it is pushed back to December, are you still keeping your order? Or are you canceling? I think I just may cancel. Um, yeah. My TV is not the um, is it? Uh, what's the color mode that they have H enhanced HDR, on that? HDR. It, the, 
Yeah, the HDR. Uh, my TV, my 4K TV does not have that. The TV's 4K pixel-wise, but it's not. it doesn't have the HDR color. And really, that's the only thing that they're getting so far we've had announced is um, Rod Ferguson announced that uh, Gears will have HDR on the S. That will be the difference between the regular one and the S. So, and you can buy the uh, new controller that they have that has the Bluetooth built in and has the texturing on the bottom and supposedly they have put in better sticks. Maybe that will fix a lot of people's issues that they're having. Um, or maybe they're just blowing smoke up our ass again. Mm-hmm. But um, you can buy those separately. So I'm, if it ends up being pushed out, I will probably cancel. Yeah. I'm on the fence because, like I said, I really do want to free up some of the uh, desk real estate here. But, that I can understand, yeah. But uh, I, I don't need the real estate. I've already got it sitting in a spot, and, and there's still enough room to drop a PS4 next to my Xbox upstairs. Mm-hmm. And downstairs, I already have everything I need, so not feeling the pull anymore. Yep. We'll see what happens. Um, and the last bit of news I wanted to talk about right off the top is Oculus uh, is no longer blocking Rift games from being played on the Vive which is, I think is, is good news for people that have the Vive. Um, so there is this third-party software out there called Revive, and I guess they allow, that's how you would play the games on your um, Vive from the Oculus. <clears throat> so the person who was doing the testing uh, says, I'm still in disbelief, but it looks like the like Oculus removed the headset check from the DRM in Oculus Runtime 1.5. Yeah, because what it was doing, it was going through for the oculus games it was doing a check to make sure an oculus was connected and if it wasn't it would uh dump it out right so uh polygon reached out to oculus for a statement and they came out and said we continually revise our entitlement and anti-piracy systems and in the june update we've removed the check for rift hardware from the entitlement check we won't use hardware checks as part of drm on pc in the future so that's pretty cool no, that's uh, was a big. I think Oculus was taking a beating there for a while, and this is probably w- one thing that they could do immediately to sort of uh, you know turn the tide a little bit in there. Yeah, the press was beating up pretty bad on that. Which yeah. it, I mean, they're trying to get their foothold in the market, but they were getting too much bad press out of it, you know. So no, not yeah, not to mention that it's just that's stacked on top of them not being able to ship out their union units, so. Might as well get rid of one of their issues, right? Yeah, I guess the Vive is down to, what, 45 days ship dates or something? Three or less days. Now? Three days. Is it three days now? Yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah, 72 so hours. Yeah. So uh, there's that. Yes. And they also, you know, being attached to Facebook, um, everybody's going to jump on them anytime they do anything. So. Yep. All right. Well, let's move on to the uh, community question of the week. And the question was, what summer release has you most excited and did you pre-order it? So we're going to read some of these uh, right now. I'll go first. Let's see. Nick Games on the Mind says, No Man's Sky, and yes, it's pre-ordered digitally. Nice. I assume that's on the PS4 because mm-hmm. he's a PlayStation guy. Um, Devious Mr. Matt of the 40 cast says, Not much really. I need to finish Uncharted 4 then get back into Witcher 3 before anything else gets bought. Yes, you do. That Witcher 3 is the good stuff. And I would say Uncharted <laughs> 4 is too. And uh, let's see. I haven't played it yet, so I can't say. Well, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Jay, right now. <laughs> I like believe you might. Uh, let's see. Sean Quicksilver3355 says Deus Ex, No Man's Sky, and Dishonored 2. And he's pre ordered all of them. I pre ordered Dishonored 2. I, I wanted that mask. I know so, it sounds foolish, but I did it. <laughs> uh, Joe, how about you read the next ones? Because I know your man Los is up here. All right. So Los, who is from the Future Monkeys podcast, said, I was looking forward to Mirror's Edge, but I'm skipping it. All I'm picking up is Lego Star Wars to play with the kids. The rest of summer is going to be devoted to my backlog. Tomb Raider, Witcher, Uncharted, O. Oh. And uh, Destiny with improved accuracy, winky face. <laughs> and uh, he said that because I called him out because he bought some stupid 
uh, stick extender things for his controller that are Destiny themed, and he said that they're going to improve the accuracy. And I just said that's cosmetic. What are you even talking about? <laughs> And I then, don't know. Uh, <laughs> it does make a difference when you get the longer sticks. Uh, just ask the girls. Uh, <laughs> Dad joke one, <laughs> Joe zero. <laughs> Where's Corey when you need him? <laughs> Albert Restino, uh, who is at Aries0926, says, I don't pre-order games. There's no reason. It's just your money being held hostage. And yeah, then, take that, Jay. He just told you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with him, but you know, I I like masks. <laughs> and then um, let's see. Pat Hader says Forza Horizon Three and Recore are still technically summer, right? Those ones. <laughs> sure. All right, Jay. And let's you, see. Uh, yep. We have. Jen M. Izzel Moxel. Um, She's also from the Future Monkeys podcast. All right. And we've got another name in here, too. So, Well, she was responding to a bunch of us, so just start with the words. Oh, there we go. All right. So uh, Zero Time Dilemma is dropping at the end of the month. I've been looking forward to that for a while. I am not familiar with this. I may have to check it out and see what it is. It's Joe, a and- sequel to, like... Those, uh, like, 999 is the first in the series. And then another one. It's, it looks like um, Saw, the game. <laughs> well, if I was German and somebody asked me if I knew these games, I would be saying 999. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Dad Joe 2? <laughs> Gamers in beta 0. <laughs> ah, we have Colin, PDX Geek. Uh, no Man's Sky. And... Did not pre-order just yet, so I'm assuming that means that uh, he is probably going to intend to, uh, but uh, we'll see. Keep us updated. He and just double his a- first PC. Ooh. I really hope he's going to be getting it on the PC if he does get it. Yeah, if I pick it up, it'll be on the PC. Um, double A Ron, otherwise known as everybody's favorite, Indio Techno. Get the fuck out of here! Uh, Rise of Iron. All right, and I assume that means Destiny, right? Um, yeah. Oh, is that what that's that pretty is? much all he played. I was like, what the hell's Rise? Oh, right, the new DLC that's coming out. I'm, so, uh, so I don't know I if don't you know. guys have been paying attention uh, during the week, but we have this new way, this new technology that people can um, respond to us with the audio clip to answer this question. So there's this um, app out there that you can get for free on your Android or Apple iOS phone. It's called Wave, W-A-V-V-E. You can look that up in your uh, stores. You can go to getwave.com. Again, that's W-A-V-V-E. And uh, so we got a response to this question. Now, if Corey was here, we would be able to play it live on the show. But because we don't have the soundboard with us tonight, we can't. But I wanted to thank Viper Strike for leaving us an audio clip, which I'll play right now. Uh, for me, probably the Banner Saga 2 on consoles. Uh, I don't have a PC, so um, I really enjoyed the first one that came to consoles earlier this year. So I'm excited that the second one not only released earlier this year on PC, but we're getting it this year on consoles as well. So... Have not pre-ordered yet. Uh, I don't think it's available to pre-order anywhere just yet, but the second it is, I will definitely be there. Anybody else who wants to leave us audio clips, uh, again, you can download this app and do so. We will be putting our um, questions up there weekly. So this is pretty cool technology. We want to get the uh, community more involved. So if you want to hear your voice on the show, um, you can just leave us feedback on there. You, or you can answer a particular question, and we'll get your voice on the show. Cool stuff, right, guys? How do yeah, I get my I, voice on the show? I, I'm trying to figure out how to get your voice I really off the show. just wanted to record on there, <laughs> but it really felt pretty stupid to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm on the show. Already on the show. <laughs> well, that would be pretty cool when we have know we have um, Corey on the show. Right. And right. I can just give him the clips and I won't tell him who it is. And, hey, this is Joe. Hey, Joe. How you doing, Joe? <laughs> 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 All right. So, again, thanks for um, that person uh, leaving his voice 
and we appreciate the answer. And uh, these guys, Joe and Jay, will have to listen during the week to hear what this person said. I'll that's, hold note on us. I see how you... That's your homework for the week, guys. Uh, Jay, why don't you tell the fine listeners what the community question is for next week? All right, let's scroll and find the red lettering. And yes, here it is. Uh, have you been enticed by this week's sales on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation Network? If so, where are you getting it? What game and why? And the why is what made your decision to purchase it uh, on sale? And clearly, Jay didn't think of the 140 character limit, but that's okay. Try to fit it in there as best you can. I we did. There's 56 <laughs> characters left over. <laughs> no, but their response, the where, the what, the why, and the how. Oh, it, it's, it's yeah, simple. I'm just see, kidding. I... I'll be honest, no. that flash sale on PSN, woo, that looks... This looks yeah, good. dude, those That's, flash sales, I buy one almost every time when they have the flash sales. But the flash sale is over. By the time this podcast gets out, the, the PSN flash sale will be over. I think it ends tomorrow right. morning. Yeah. yeah. Pretty early. What's the Xbox stuff about, Jay? Uh, it's just the, the Games with Gold stuff that they have out. I mean, if you go in and click on the gold, um, I mean, they tell you what your free games are, and then you go down below that, and they have, they, a lot of times they have some good deals. Um, I mean, we used to complain that you didn't get good deals on Play Store or on consoles, I should say. Um, but that has changed, um, I think, in the, probably in the past two years, um, really more drastic dramatically in the past year and a half or so um i mean you're seeing games for five bucks i mean i've got the um the metro games i think i bought both metro game the you know metro games the redux versions for for 10 bucks or in or like eight bucks i think mm, you know, i mean they, they've got some good deals the only thing i would say about that is if you can wait you will find the deals but you're not seeing these types of deals within the first month to three months of the release it's more like six to no. eight, six to eight months or more right right yeah, yeah. so you just, but i mean you, you don't see that on steam either though. i mean steam you might see a ten dollar knockoff and even xbox is starting to do that for some of the stuff that doesn't really sell as well right. or some of the stuff that really sells i mean like you can get um they've had halo for like 15 or 20 bucks off and on here and there you can get them in store and you can also they've had a digital they've i think they've marked it down to like Eighteen twenty dollars. Yeah, so, I, I guess where, where PC has it again, you go to these gray sites like CD Keys. You know, you can get Mafia Ooh. Three right now for thirty five bucks. You know, right? You're, you're not going to see that. Also, seeing that's beginning to get in the news now, where um, some of the um, uh, the devs and the just and the uh, right uh, tiny tiny build and G two A are having some sort of uh, kerfuffle online. So, right. Yeah. And there's been others that have also said the same. You know, it it it, it cuts into them because it cuts down the sales that they would make off of the right. consoles because these sites basically what these sites do is they in some cases it's uh if there's a um uh, what do you call them uh we buy the bundles and stuff and people the, the codes that they don't want they can basically sell them off and then these sites buy them in bulk and then resell them or, or something yeah. like that. So well, a lot of times what happens is games are priced cheaper in other countries. So like a game, you cannot charge $60 for a game in Russia. No one's going to buy it. No. So what happens is they have all these keys designated for those types of countries. Let's just be frank here. You know, these are how st stereotypes are formed. Some people in those types of countries do not buy games at all. They just pirate them. So even though there's these keys have been designated for these countries, they're never going to be used. So whoever the distributor was that got the keys, then they resell them to people like CD keys or other places at a cheaper cost than what, you know, than what they, right. would, have, than they would have to buy if they bought them directly from the publisher. And that's how they pass along the savings to you is because they bought them, you know, cheaper off someone else. Yeah. So. And, and I've purchased some like that. Um, yeah. I, I think I got Doom that way think doom's the only one i've actually done that on cd keys but yeah. i mean uh, i haven't really heard of anybody getting ripped off i've had of people getting a bunk code and then but they took care of it so yeah cd keys i've never been ripped off the only and i try to when i do buy something on cd keys i do try to make sure it's something triple a because i know that's not while it still might be affecting the developer or publisher somewhat, it is not crippling like an indie would. You know, you, just, right. you buy an indie off of CD keys, and I don't even know if those games are ever on CD keys. I don't really think they are. So I tend to just do the to the bigger uh, the bigger publishers. 
<clears throat> yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? How do we get on that whole conversation? Oh, the Xbox that, that sales. That was a community question. And yes. Yeah. All right. So again, yes. uh, let us know if you've been enticed by any of this week's sales and give us the how, the why, the what, and the where. And because you only have 140 characters, don't get in as in-depth as we got. So. <laughs> <laughs> or you can put the, the ever-popular one of two at the bottom and keep going uh, like some people like to do. <laughs> Let's move so, on. To, go ahead, Joe. Are we going to talk about the games that we're looking forward to? For oh, sure. Releases? Sure. I had, how, how silly of me to just move on without quizzing the both of you. Yes, go on. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the game that I'm most intrigued by is the game uh, Abzu. Yes, it, that's the one that had the fish tank in E3, right? I think so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's don't uh, mind me. Uh, I'm Google searching right now. <laughs> it's uh, it basically looks like you know Journey, but underwater. underwater. And uh, yeah, it looks super super cool. It was featured in the PlayStation conference last year, and uh, you know I kind of forgot about it until they started talking about it again this year uh, throughout the conference. Not actually on stage, but just throughout the E3 itself. And I was like, oh, yeah, that game's coming out. I can't wait. So that's that's mine. Cool. Uh, Jay, w while you're Googling, can you uh, talk and Google at the same time? I think I can. Okay. Um, so what are you? Uh, Any, yeah, I, I, I pulled something up, but it's not right. So <laughs> I'll check that out later. All right. All right. Um, I am interested in ReCore. Um that's like I think that's Mike, September sixteenth. So that's really pushing summer to the very end of the limit, right? That's like three or four. Look, days I work before. at a school, and, <laughs> and my hours are are according to that for what I work. So I stretch out the summer as far as I can. So, yeah. so you're already school busy. doesn't start till September. So I'll uh, so yeah. So September sixteenth, you're already yeah. be working two or three weeks. Yeah, exactly. So um, anything, but anything before the before September. I'm just can. trying to finish my backlog right now. I've got so much mm. to play. Um, I could, you know, I would be lying to you if I didn't say I wasn't going to buy No Man's Sky. So No Man's Sky is something I'm intrigued with. I will definitely buy. Um, a game that we saw at PAX East that we liked, and I know I'll buy, is Live Lock. Uh, that's coming oh, out. Oh, yes. That's coming out August 2nd. Um, I need to see more of the Deus Ex thing. You know, yeah, I'm not. We'll see, we'll see what that's like. Um, I still have to play the uh, the last one that came out. If you get the director's cut, they redid the boss ones, so they took out the bad parts, basically. Yeah, and I'm sure um, I will be picking up the uh, new Madden game because my son loves to play that, and um, got to play Devious Mr. Matt in our football and I Sky Kiddo. We got to, you know, <laughs> get the new iteration and, and play our teams. You know, Bengals, Broncos, and Patriots. So. I, I might even uh, try that, and, and probably I should stream that. But uh, <laughs> if I do, it would be on the Xbox through uh, EA Play. So yeah, I wouldn't uh, actually be buying it. Yeah, so those are just some of the things that uh, you know popped into my head that I would think that I would be picking up between now and and September. I'm sure yeah. there's gonna, I'm sure there's gonna be some other stuff. What's the uh, Batman thing? The Return to Arkham. That's what a remaster. Yeah, I'm good. That, I got the games of, of the first two games, right? Yeah, yeah that comes out July tw uh, 26th, I believe. So um, that could be guys. Good. I think you're overlooking Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Oh, you know how many oh, times? Shit, I forgot about that one. Thanks for reminding me, Joe. You know how many times I have bought those Olympic ones for my kids because uh, my son went through a phase where he liked all like the various Olympic stuff that you could do. Those are like you talk about shovelware. <laughs> that is oh, some, yeah. That is some of the worst gaming ever the worst yeah <laughs> um so let's talk about what we've been playing i'll go first because it'll be rather quick um some more of the division this week streamed a bunch of that uh played a little bit with jay as well uh, i played mostly this week hard reset redux made some good pro <sighs> made some good progress on that and played uh a fair amount of that online too and i'll try to get that video up and uh, lastly, Marvel Heroes 2016, as I mentioned in the Steam Summer Sale, I uh, picked that up, the add-on pack, and played. And so basically, this is like Diablo with, um, you know, Marvel characters. And I actually had like five hours into the game. I think in the very early days of Gamers in Beta, I was playing Marvel Heroes because that was right around the time that I started getting into PC gaming. And I don't think the reason I ever went back to it was because it was just all mouse and keyboard and I'm just not having any of that in my life. So 
but now the game has controller support. Ooh. So, yes. So I'm I may have to check this out because is this free to play and then yes. you just buy packs? Right, okay. or you can earn them in game. And I think I made, you know, uh, Jeremy was my sort of sensei in the early days of Fallout 4, and he's going to have to be the same for this Marvel Heroes and get me back on track. I think I made a terrible mistake and invested all my points in the thing from um, Fantastic, Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I was thinking that many years ago, but apparently he's the only character I really have built up. He's a level 14 or 15 character, and everybody else is just like level 1, so... I'm gonna have nice. to get. I'm gonna have to get back on the right path and start using some different characters and figure out what the hell is going on because I just keep going to this beach and doing this mission and, and beating up Hydra over and over again and uh, I really need to get into some other missions before I get bored to death. And, and you can nice. play co-op with other people. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Nice. I I haven't played that game in like two years, I think. Yeah, well, the last time I logged in was uh, June sixteenth of two thousand thirteen. <laughs> so it's funny how that was wow. almost it was almost three years to the date. Well, people are still playing the hell out of that game, so yep. there's got to be something. I hear there. they've they've definitely done some some interesting new things with it. So yeah, so I'll be uh, spending some time with that, and hopefully Jeremy will uh, help me out along the way. Yes. But uh, Jay, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing some more Doom on the PC. Oh god, that's so pretty, and I love the fast pace. Mm, I was bummed uh, to hear that. Um, that uh, gamer goalie found the two uh, motion sickness. Well, I was glad to find out that he played the um, demo. Uh, the demo that they have, which I guess they've said they're going to keep out infinitely now, um, which is the first level, I believe, um, which is good, so people can try it. So if you have been interested in Doom, it's on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. All of them have the uh, that uh, demo that you can try. So check it out and see if it's going to make you motion sick. So. Because uh, it is fast. Um, I mentioned that I purchased Witcher 3. I've played very little, but my goodness, it looks good. I still have to see how much it um, affects your uh, load times. Because on console, when you die, I mean, man, you can go off, take a shower, make some breakfast, come back, and it's still loading. So uh, if, after you die. Um, I mentioned previously I played some Portal 2. Well, I had mentioned online on Twitter that um, I was looking for some co-op because that's the uh, part that I haven't completed on that, and I had to get a lot of those achievements. And uh, thank you, Zaf45, for uh, replying. And uh, we went in and played, and um, we went in and got the achievements that he had left to complete and completed the um, levels that he needed to get completed, and then um, we went back, and I started the game on my side of things and invited him in and started playing. And I am just really disappointed that Valve has not made another portal. It's almost like they've decided they're not going to take these great games that they had and make games anymore, because we were looking back, and it's like, holy shit, that, re that released in 2011, and that game is so much fun to play. Um, especially the co-op is a lot of fun. I know... Mike, you got, again, back to the motion sickness, but... Uh, yeah, that was one game that didn't float my boat from a story aspect. I'm not into puzzle games that much, and it made me motion sickness. So, three strikes, you're our portal. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. I had, had a lot of fun playing that. So, uh, um, that'll be uh, pretty much what I'm going to be hitting pretty hard, so... All right, and Joe... I had played a little bit of uh, Mario Tennis. It was at the library. It was just like, eh, I'll grab it. I've never played a Mario Tennis game before. Why not? I can play it with Dez, who is my uh, stepson. And uh, so we threw it up into the old Wii U and fired it up. And he friggin' wiped the floor with me and won two games to one. And so uh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you know, I challenge. I'm gonna have to challenge him to a rematch before we bring it back to the library. Nice. Uh, got a little bit more time into Overwatch. This week's uh, rotating game mode is everybody plays as uh, Soldier Seventy Six. So everybody's running around with a uh, automatic rifle, and uh, it's intense. And then I uh, got a, f a few more hours into Doom, which was nice. Uh, I was able to just hop right back in. Didn't really need to readjust to anything. 
Uh, the only thing that I needed to readjust is I did a special binding on my mouse for melee. That way I can trigger the uh, the glory kills without having to use my keyboard. And I couldn't remember if it was uh, mouse button 4 or 5, and so I kept like fumbling between the mouse buttons a couple times, but after uh, two or three glory kills, I was able to get through it. And so uh, I'm really enjoying that. I'm pretty sure I'm super close to the end at this point. Uh, and I, uh, I, I look forward to that. It's starting to get pretty brutal. Yes, it mm. does. It does get very difficult towards the end. I want to ask you about Overwatch real quick. They came out with some sort of mode where it's like team deathmatch or... Yeah, so that's the one, that's what I was just talking about right now, is this week's uh, rotating game mode is everybody is agents, or Soldier 76. Yeah. And that's, so, yeah. It's, that's it's, in, it's, go ahead. It's intense. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I'm not saying that's going to convince me to buy the game, but it is a little enticing, because I think my main complaint when I played that game is I think I felt like other characters were either, I'm not sure if overpowered is the right word, but they had more abilities than the characters that I were drawn to. And I felt mm -hmm. like when I went head to head against them, I was losing uh, quickly. But if everybody was on the same playing field with the same character, especially mm -hmm. a character I like, like Soldier Seventy Six, that is that is in intriguing. But you say those are temporary, right? That just goes away. Yeah, I think they rotate every week. It might be even every day, but I don't get in enough to be able to verify that. Right. I know. I think last week they were doing it to where it was all defensive characters. So you could only select the four characters that are uh, assigned as defensive characters, which is like, you know, Junkrat and uh, Mai, which is the chick with the like the ice beam and stuff like, and and a couple other. So mm -hmm. that was interesting having to play all the defensive characters as offensive characters. Cool. Well, anything else you've been playing, Joe, or is that it? Uh, that's everything. Um, well, let's dive into the news. Like I said, no Corey tonight, so no special segments or anything like that. We need him around when we do the hot seat. And um, I didn't really find anything newsworthy that I wanted to do the uh, Dilligaf this week. So it's going to be a pretty streamlined show here. We'll jump right into the news. Uh, Call of Duty 4, the original dev, which, of course, is uh, Vince Zampella. Um, I guess has phoned up Activision and said, don't fuck up the remaster. So um, he says, I told them, don't fuck it up. And he said, this is my on the record response. I rang them up and said, honestly, don't fuck it up. It's a huge part of people's gaming memories. <laughs> so I found that uh, sort of interesting. Of course, he must have some friends over there still. And there was probably more to the conversation, but <clears throat> that is interesting. Either one of you um, play the original uh, Modern Warfare? Does it have a, a special uh, memory for either one of you? I think I played with you guys. Mm, if I ever played well, that. I should say with Mike. And I don't think I got into Call of Duty until Modern Warfare 2. I certainly, yeah, played, I, I certainly yeah. played Modern Warfare, the story, the campaign. I played the campaign in all of them. But I don't think I dabbled too much online. Yeah, uh, back then it was just the campaign I was playing. So I don't know if I played the first or the second one. I played the one with the airport scene. That's um, two, isn't it? I believe two. That's the second one? Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, I, I can't say that I played the first one. Uh, let's see. Moving on here. Bethesda has explained via Twitter why console owners have to rebuy Skyrim Special Edition and PC owners do not. So Serpent Monkey on Twitter tweeted DC Deacon, who is Pete Hines, who's their head of marketing. Uh, so he says rather eloquently to Pete, so are you guys just going to fuck over us console guys or give us Skyrim for free like PC does? And uh, Pete rather nicely responds, we're making a game available for Xbox One and PS4. It already exists on PC with high-res textures. So Serpent Monkey responds, so why is it that people who paid the same price have to pay again? And uh, lastly, Mr. Hines re responds, because it's for a new platform, and just like any other remaster for new platforms. Now, do you guys side with Mr. Hines, or do you side with Serpent Monkey? I mean, Mr. Hines, certainly, I mean, it makes sense what he's saying, so I, I'm not upset about it whatsoever. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with, with Pete. I mean, they... 
they had to go in and redo this for uh, you know a, a new console or new consoles. Um, they you couldn't run it on the 360 or the PS3 because it wouldn't push it. Um, and like said, the PC they've done upreses, and the matter of fact, they've got one coming out which is an add-on. It also does like a major texture overlap for PC. So for PC, I don't think they would get a ton of sales anyways. So it kind of makes sense for them to just. Well, what's interesting is the PC people have never had to buy any of these high resolution texture packs. They were given to them all for free. And if you. Or mods. Or, or mods. But anything that came right from Bethesda was always free. Right. And, and if you already own Skyrim on PC, they're giving you this special edition for free. So uh, the Skyrim Legendary Edition. Okay. Whatever whatever they're they're phrasing it as. So <laughs> Which means I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what so you're saying if you own Skyrim Legendary Edition on PC, you're getting I believe that is what they're gonna if you have the Skyrim Legendary Edition, which is basically has everything in it. All the DLC and everything. Okay, um, so if you just you have the vanilla, if you have the vanilla version of Skyrim on PC, you are not getting everything. You are not uh, getting. Yeah, the- I could be wrong, but I believe that is what they have said in the past. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll have to look and see if the Legendary Edition is on sale in the uh, Steam sale because I. And that's why I-, I bought it last time. It was on a Steam sale. I picked it up. <laughs> All right. Let's move over to uh, PlayStation. The Uncharted 4 game, the uh, multiplayer DLC and patch hit next week. So according to Naughty Dog, they say, we're just scratching the surface by saying it includes new guns, new boosters, new taunts, new skins, custom matches, custom loadout names, a revamp to rank team deathmatch, and more. That was a lot. Uh, a feature that the studio cites as most requested by our community will also be added. Uh, those that already own the triple pack will receive more items with the multiplayer pack one. So I know a few of us um, from various podcasts have played some of the multiplayer and had some fun nights. So we'll have to check out this DLC and uh, see how good it is. But I believe all their DLC for multiplayer is free. Nice. That, that is a good thing. Have either one of you? Well, you don't even own the game yet, right, Joe? Correct. I don't. I don't own it. I, I, Jay doesn't I've have only it. Neither one of you. First one. Neither no, one. I don't have it. I have the, um, the, uh, the, collect- the collection of the first three games, which yeah. I want to play through first. So. Oh, me too. All right. Um, well, let's move over here to some um, Xbox news. So there was an interview with at E3 with the technical director of the coalition, Mike Rayner. And he talked about the benefits of working with Epic's Unreal Engine 4. Uh, So he said, one of the big advantages we have with Unreal Engine 4 is it is a cross-platform engine. So when we build our game, we're testing it on Windows, we're running it on Xbox One, and we're always keeping the game running on both platforms at all times. Um, He went on to say, the best PC gaming experience for Gears of War 4 um, that they will be targeting the most high-end high end hardware, but the game will also run capably on a mid-spec setup. And, and on Xbox One, we put a lot of effort into really pushing the hardware to deliver the visual showcase that Gears is known for. Um, and he goes on and, and does some more uh, technical stuff about 4K. One thing we are able to do with Gears 4 is we've authored all the content in 4K resolution. So on Windows 10, if you've got a system that can support it, you're going to get high-res texture packs. You're going to get a premium 4K visual experience. And on Xbox One, we've totally optimized it for 1080p. And I think Jay touched upon some of that uh, HDR in the beginning of our show. Right, Jay? Yes, that uh, he said that, um, like I said, um, Gears will play differently on the different consoles, but not as far as, you know, uh, the way the actual, you know, load time, stuff like that. But uh, you will have that, you know, mm-hmm. higher uh, color, more colors. So, yep. So that's the different uh, shades of brown. <laughs> yes, you will have, instead of having 10 shades of brown, you'll have 57 shades of brown. All right, so that segues into our next thing here. Uh, the Xbox One S is going to support HDR color via HDR10 standard. Um, if your TV only has Dolby Vision, 
you might be out of luck. So during its press conference at E3, Microsoft announced the Xbox One S, a 4K compatible version of the Xbox One, um, the inclusion of high dynamic range color support. So for anybody out there who has the uh, Dolby Vision, do any of you guys have just Dolby Vision? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I, 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 I didn't know there was a thing that called Dolby Vision, so, yeah, so. I, I'm screwed anyways then. <laughs> So it says here in this article, um, there continues to be a debate as to the ability of most people, whether or not they can notice a difference between the now common 1080p standard and 4K resolution, more precisely referred to as 2160p. Uh, at typical television sizes and viewing distances, the apparent merits of HDR color are less debated. Uh, Netflix has been vocal about the advantages of HDR and talking about it, its own plans for the HDR standard, calling it the next big thing. You might want to uh, adjust your TVs accordingly. And this week, I just happened to pick up a 55-inch Samsung, you know, their top-of-the-line model, the uh, 8000 series. And the TV was $100 cheaper today on Amazon, so I uh, called them up and I got $100 back. Nice. Uh, so that's soft, Buy me one. That softened the blow a little bit. And it does look very nice. You know, you get the very narrow bezel, 55 inches, and watch some 4K stuff on uh, Netflix. That was pretty cool. And I've been watching a lot of a lot of television. It's been hard to get off the couch and actually game this <laughs> week. And just quickly... I know Indio Techno loves when I beat up on the Xbox One, so allow me to um, talk about this here for just a minute. So I'm on my Give couch. Give time. <laughs> so I just uh, <laughs> was on my couch enjoying my new television and said, shit, there's a game on the Xbox One that I need to play. You know, a PR person very nicely gave me the code. I knew I already had it downloaded and on my uh, office Xbox One, and it was a very small file. I should be able to download it on my family room Xbox One, no problem. <clears throat> Hold on, let me take a drink. This is such a, a poignant story here. Hold on. Ah, oh, almost choked. Uh, so when I fired what's up the X... Ex... <laughs> what's that? What are you drinking over there? Is that Kool-Aid? That was a little Mountain Dew for you there, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um... So yeah, I fired up the Family Room Xbox One and the game was not there in my library, uninstalled or installed. And when I went to the um, store... It said I had to buy it. And I was like, no, no, no. I already have this game installed on my Office Xbox One. Where is it? So some people are telling me that because my Office Xbox One is in preview mode, and that's where the game was downloaded and installed, that my other Xbox One also has to be in preview mode, or they won't play nice with each other and won't have the library synced. Now, yeah, I'm not they sure. broke some shit here. I'm not sure if that is exact you know, or not if that's correct, but I am in a situation now where my Xbox libraries are not in sync because one Xbox is in the preview program and another is not. Hopefully was, they fix this in a few days. Long story short, I was on my couch, wanted to play the Xbox One, and sure as shit could not. It seems like no matter when I fire that bad boy up in certain situations, it will not work the way I want to. And, and Mike, you really need to opt out of the uh, preview programs because you already have enough issues with it. You don't need the preview program to come in and really piss you off. I mean... Well, I want to have it on one of them so at least I can talk about it, you know, be educated, you know, pass along my experiences. But, yeah, um, you know, I don't use the damn thing often enough, so I don't feel like I have that many issues with it as anymore. I mean... It's yeah. Like, it's like a car that doesn't run. Well, you put it in the garage and you don't run it. They've so. driven you away. Yep, pretty much. And that has been the case in, in other cases too, with some of the more hope, uh, you know, more high-profile um, podcasts. They they've done the same too. So um, I mean, there's some of them. They've even gotten rid of the Xboxes altogether. Uh, mm -hmm. They've they've had so many issues. Um, I, I mean, even I I will admit, as an Xbox fanboy, that this uh, preview program that came out it is really broken. I am not liking Cortana at all. She is more like Siri, where it's not processing right there on the console. It's using the web. So there's a delay. So, like, if you're using it to, you know, pause and play, it's making it useless. It, 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 they're literally making it useless now. Um, trying to get it to pull up games and stuff like that. It's just, it's not recognizing stuff. 
I'm sure it will improve over time, but I still don't think it'll work as well as um, the uh, the version with Connect, where you just said, you know, Xbox do this, Xbox do that. Mm. So. I mean, the problem I could be having this time around could be self-inflicted because I'm in the preview program, but I don't remember a time before when my libraries were out of sync. So that's No, just- this is a first time, and, and this, they're running into a lot of this. They've had issues where uh, you couldn't purchase content in the beginning um, on your <laughs> Xbox One if you were in the newest preview program. Uh, it just wouldn't pull up. It would just go to the go to the store and just spin, wouldn't connect. Now I guess they're having issues. They had some issues with backwards compatibility on even the non-preview ones. Um, I, I think they, they may be changing something to do with your licensing or whatever, checks or whatnot. Um, so they've had, they're have having a lot of issues with, with that and with uh, licensing. And this is kind of foolish that if you're in the preview program and buy it on the preview program console, that it's not registering on your other console. That is just so weird, and you're not the only one that I've heard this happening to. I guess this is a common thing. So um, if you do run into it, check out the Xbox forums and see if they can get anywhere with you. Either that or do what I do. I use the uh, – I prefer the Twitter hive mind. We usually have it figured out in about 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, who have you been um, dealing with this week? Oh, well, what do we have for issues this week? No, I mean- um, people-wise – with Mox and I don't remember. There was a bunch of us. There was a couple times that we ran into issues where um, the games wouldn't download. Uh, for me, uh, games wouldn't download. They were just stuck in in the queue. It says it says in queue, but nothing was downloading. So a lot of times you'll have like if you have four or five games sitting there, you'll have you know. Three of them will be in the queue, and one of them will be downloading. Well, n- none of them would download. Um, so I had to go in and delete them and go through and then do a reboot and rub my belly while I pick my nose and slap my ass and fucked fine. The thing finally worked. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's move on. Uh, we have some backwards compatibility games. Jay, since you are the Xbox guy, you want to read us uh, what the new games are? Uh, I can as soon as I open this up. Um, I know one of them is uh, Fallout New Vegas. That yep. was the big one that was announced. We have Blood Knights, which I'm not familiar with. Meh, it was all right. Hack and slash yeah, RPG. Name, at least. Hack, hack and slash RPG. I think I reviewed yeah. that way back for um, when I was writing for uh, XBLA fans. Um, and then one of my favorite Twisted Pixel games. It is my actually my favorite Twisted Pixel game, uh, Comic Jumper. I did not realize this was coming backwards compatible. Another game that I'm going to be replaying and making my back my backlog even worse because I absolutely love that game. Uh, Crystal Quest. Um, never, never heard played of it. that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Chronicles of Mistara. Um, Never play that. It. Yeah, I am alive, uh, which I believe that was an arcade game. Yep. Joe Danger, another arcade game, but that was after they kind of opened things up. And uh, this one may be more familiar to people is Red Faction Battlegrounds. Uh, wasn't this more of like a? Maybe I'm mixing Battlegrounds up with something else. But was this wasn't a full on Red Faction game? This more of yeah, I think it was more of an arcade one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I never, yeah. I never played it. So, yeah. but uh, so the big one in that is you got Fallout New Vegas is out there, and um, I don't know. You don't have it in here, but um, there has been ramblings about uh, Red Dead Redemption again. Uh, they've updated the store page to say that it's going to be across all platforms um, with a basically upcoming date to be released. So, um, again, we didn't hear anything at E3. Uh, hopefully that comes soon because, like I've said, I did not play the game, and I want to go in and play, but I'm not going to do it until it's backwards compatible on the one. What I find interesting 
is that the backwards compatible games, you feel in your heart of hearts that there is some improved visuals going from the 360 to the one. But what I find interesting is that, you know, Phil Spencer is coming out and saying that there's going to be no improved visuals from the Xbox one to the slim, you know, I don't know if there's, it's not like it's a, you know, like a 10, eight or a seven twenty to 10 80. It just, it seems like they run a little better. Um, and not all of them. Some of the, some of the backwards compatible games run like shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of the ones that I've played have it to me, it just seems like they've played well. They mm-hmm. play better. I also, there is very little, um, you know, talk out there. If the developers are actually doing any of this work, or is it just Microsoft getting licenses and the okay agreement, and then it it goes up? I've in well, they've my said research. That, that, go ahead. It, it's they've said that it didn't require any any changes on the uh, developers' part. Mm-hmm. That so they are just, literally um, emulating the 360 on the one, and. Um, you know, so, it, so the emulation then is giving you what you feel is sometimes a slight improvement in in visuals and performance. Yeah, and it may just be me. I don't know, uh, mm-hmm. it, but I do feel like some of them, you know, play a little bit. Uh, to be honest with you, Portal Two does not look any better to me, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't seem like it, it plays any better. Um, it, it just seems to play the way I remember playing previously. Um, as a matter of fact, the visuals look like they're you know, 720 or something. I don't know yeah. what they are, but it does, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it, it, it's a little pixely, but again, that game was 2011. Yeah. Um, and I haven't played it on PC, so I can't compare to that either. You know, some of the Halo games seem to look a little prettier and. I have and, to know, be I'm honest. I've, I've games. only played one backwards compatible game, so I haven't, I haven't given it its uh, fair shake to um, talk about yeah. it one way or the other, but maybe someday when I have uh, free time, I'll try some more, uh, but that's, all I had for news items for this week, guys. Um, let's move on to some uh, shout outs and, and wrap this one up. You want to go first, Jay? Sure. I just wanted to put it out to you know some of the other podcasts again uh, that I'm enjoying that get me through my day. Um, I am now working, well, I'm working afternoons instead of nights now. So I'm a lot busier uh, because we're, the work that we do during the summer is a lot more um, busy work than what I do you know, during the school year. So, uh, you know, listening to uh, Everyday Gamers, uh, the 40 cast, I always love the 40 cast, uh, even, I don't know, it seemed a little better before they get that mic guy on there, though. Yeah, that fucking um, guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one this week. We uh, talked for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so on, um, you know, the, I'd say, tips on uh, oral satisfaction. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far. I'm only 11 minutes and 45 seconds in, so... Um, the Dad's Getting Grounded podcast. Want to put that out there? Friendly rivalry. We love those guys. And Gorilla uh, Radio. Gorilla Radio. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, um, listen to Sean for uh, um, OMG the hour. OMG Hour. I enjoy that. I always love Game Is Unscripted. Uh, I, I like that one because you get across uh, reference. You know, of, of all the different podcasts coming in, and uh, you know, kind of gives you a, 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 a collaboration of, of the podcast. And even though some of them may be very different, it, it usually makes it interesting to listen to. So I, I really like them. I listen to Game Hounds, um, even though um, uh, Nick sometimes puts me to sleep. But that's Goalie's fault for not keeping him on task. Um. <laughs> yeah. I think I caught a little bit of the show this week. Yeah. Some good stuff. And yeah. um, Gamers Unscripted, again, I apologize. No show this week. We lost it due to the uh, Skype issues and apologies to the mayor, Meef J, because he was our guest, as well as uh, Eric Glovebox from the 40 Cast. So sorry, guys. We'll have to get you back on as soon as possible. Thanks, uh, Skype. Right. Yeah, as thanks. big a bummer as that is, it's also not the worst because I'm still trying to catch up on podcasts as it is after E3. Yep. And just buried me under podcasts. Oh, you got to listen yeah. at one and a half times, some of them. <laughs> and I'm glad we're out of the uh, E3 talk for the most part. Definitely. Yep. So um, packs. Jay, anything else or was that it? Uh, that pretty much covers it. All right. Joe, what's going on in the uh, trade waiters world? Uh, I think that we're going to be getting together this Thursday to record our next show where we talk about um, 
a Valiant comic called Rye. Uh, I haven't actually started reading it yet. I did pick it up, but I haven't opened it, so I'll have to make sure that I do that. But uh, aside from that, I just want to say that we are starting to rake in that Google money on my uh, podcast I do with my wife. And so I'm really excited that that's happening. <laughs> cool. And that so one's... that's on, that's up on YouTube, right? That's the Google money yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. We, uh, we put it out both on YouTube as well as on iTunes, but the majority of our listeners or whatever are on YouTube itself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she just, she just made all of her old videos public again. Um, because there was quite the demand for it. And a lot of eBay policies have changed to make it so we can't really be attacked on our store like we were in the past. Yep. And so uh, it's it's a little bit safer to do. And so, uh, yeah, so we, we, we started doing that. And I think she's going to do some more videos in the future. She's trying to rope me into doing some, some videos as well cool but you know can't uh can't turn down those checks from google so nope. i'm i'm fine with it i'll do a, a quick five minute video here and there about the sh- bras the that i'm shipping out you know yeah bras mm. all that you so. gotta put some now would you ever um in those videos besides talking about what you're shipping out would you ever like say like well i guess it's got to be tough like to go on there and say, "Hey, I'm shipping out this bra," and you're actually wearing it before you ship it out. But are you, are you, are you wearing any of these clothes in any of the videos? Because some stuff we've seen, you know, has been kind of humorous. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not wearing any of the clothes. Yeah. My wife, my wife has taken uh, has has propositioned me to put on these weird shits. Yeah. From uh, from our store that uh, we have on her Instagram account called States Place. Right. Yes. So uh, you can see me in a ridiculous uh, plus size leopard print dress if you really yeah. want to. <clears throat> that, should, that, should, <laughs> that should be a regular in, that should be a regular in some of your uh, videos. <laughs> it's just me rocking that shit. <laughs> yeah, talking about hey I'm shipping out this today guys. This is great. Look at all these boxes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, gonna re- I'm gonna regret I'm gonna regret getting rid of this one. It's my yeah. favorite ensemble. Look at my buttocks. Um <laughs> over what? Oh, off the rails. <laughs> and anything else, uh, Joe? No, no, no. That's it. Um shutting out myself basically. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm hesitant to throw this out there because sometimes when I do this publicly on Twitter, it brings in um, unwanted uh, people. But porn bots? St- no, worse oh. than that. Um, so I want to um, sort of. I don't. I don't have these aspirations to make the gamers and beta site the, the next Polygon or IGN or anything like that. But I would like to get what? More, what? I would like to get more. Um, <laughs> content on there and stuff like that so i will throw this out there if anybody is looking to um you know whether they want to write uh whether they occasionally want to be a co-host with us whether they want to interview developers and have that interview be on the show um i welcome any sort of help that anybody would like to give so if you're listening and say hey i want to dabble in something um you know, then feel free to hit me up and Joe, maybe just real quickly, um, you know, you've done some stuff and, um, you know, I think I'm fairly easy to work with. I'm not demanding or anything like that. And I think your experience has been, has been positive with the writing and stuff like that. I don't know if you wanted to quickly talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. If you've ever, uh, at least personally, I've always kind of aspired to do writing stuff. I've, I've, uh, written some stories for, things that I did in the past, but I never really had somebody that was um, willing to take on the editor role and give feedback on the crap that I write. So uh, it's definitely been cool to have that as an option, and it's been cool to have Gamers and Beta as an outlet to put things out on. And then, of course, you know, I got to go and take on special projects like going out to the Lawbreakers thing, and next I get to go to the PAX. So uh, this has definitely been a super positive experience, and I like having this kind of thing under my uh, under my belt. 
Cool. So, so again, I don't have uh, these lofty aspirations to uh, make us the next big thing. Um, and unfortunately, I can't pay anybody in real hard cash, but I can uh, pay you in uh, game codes. I can uh, pay you in good times. Not those types of good times. Get your mm. get your brain out of the gutter there, people, you disgusting bastards. Um, but if you ever want to come on the podcast and have some laughs with us, if you ever want to uh, talk to developers, I could certainly put those types of things in motion for you. So, um don't be shy. You can email us at uh, gamersinbeta at gmail.com. You can uh, tweet us at gamersinbeta. And uh, those same addresses, you can also send any feedback or questions, even if you don't want to uh, participate on the site, but you want to send us things for us to talk about during the uh, next show. Feel free to hit those up. And, of course, uh, leave us uh, ratings wherever you listen to us. We appreciate all the, uh, the positives, the negatives, and all the in-betweens. Uh, anything yeah. I missed, Jay? I uh, just shout out all the listeners and those that are giving us feedback. We appreciate it, and uh, you know, like I said, you can now do those uh, audio ones, and uh, we promise those will be coming out, and you will hear that. So, uh, until next time, same beta time, same beta channel, and hopefully Corey will be back with the uh, audio outtakes for us. See ya. I didn't, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. At one point, I choked so much, I puked. So I had to mute that at the end. If you saw me, <laughs> cool. if, if you saw me go on mute, cool. um, that's the reason why I was puking. And hopefully, just by muting myself, that that is, didn't make it to the show. But we will find out if uh, XSplit picked that up in any other sort of way. So that will be humorous <laughs> if you guys are talking. Jesus and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, I just had this I couldn't clear my throat I was drinking as fast as I could and it wasn't going away and finally I was like the only way this is going away is if I fucking puke so I just fucking puked it up ah. yep